this episode brought to you by Gamakatsu Hooks, the sharpest around. Outer Outdoors, tougher, stronger, smarter. And by Beaver Dam Tip Ups, heritage in ice fishing. What's up guys, Clay from Wisconsin Angling Outdoors here today and today I'm basically going to show you how to set up your beaver dam tip up for success uh, fishing for largemouth bass. So uh, basically what I've done is cut my old rig off here and I'm just going to show you. Obviously the first thing you're going to need to do if it's a new tip up is you're going to want to spool your Dacron braided line. I got 30 pound, it's just called ice line tip up line. Um, so the things you're going to need is going to be a little terminal tackle, tackle box with some split shots and uh, you know it's your, really your choice whether you want to use a swivel or not but then you're also going to want to get yourself some fluorocarbon leader line this happens to be Sunline uh, 14 pound fluorocarbon uh, FC Sniper I really like this stuff it works really well for ice fishing as well very durable so uh, first thing I'm going to do to get you guys started is I'm going to unravel you know, they say your arm, your arm, uh, your wingspan, sorry, on your arms is about as, as much as you are tall. So I'm going to take that, which will at least give me six and a half feet. And I'm going to take about another half a foot. And I'm going to cut it right at the spool. You want about seven or a little more feet of line here. And this is really the key to success to catching those finicky largemouth. And, you know, you can also catch slew sharks, a.k.a. northern pike. Uh, we just call them slew sharks since we got back from North Dakota. But, um... You're just going to take it and you're just going to tie a double uni from your floral to your braid. Tie this, get your floral side done first so you don't have any problems. Take your braid side, do the same. Braid side done. Washing them both up. Draw them together and then I like to take both tag ends and give those a good pull as well. And just check your knot for strength. Nice thing is fluorocarbon does give you a little bit of stretch, just a little bit, you know, not like mono wood or you know, even some fire line has a little bit of stretch in it. Believe it or not, even though it's braid, I'm just gonna cut my tags. You know, the, the good thing is, too, about your fluorocarbon is this knot, you know, as crucial as it is with the fluorocarbon in, you don't have to get the tag super close cut like you would if you're fishing, you know, light braid. But, uh, you know, you can get her fairly close. This knife is absolutely not sharp at all. So we're going to take it. This knife is absolutely not sharp at all. I use this one at work, so... This one pretty much sucks. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we've got our braid with about a seven foot fluorocarbon leader. Now, the nice thing is about this is you can use, um, you know, you can use this in any really any any real depth of water. I got these Gamagatsu round bend trebles. These are size number six, I believe. So these are a little bit smaller treble, but if you're fishing for largemouth, it's important to have really sticky sharp hooks. I'm just going to take the line. Of course, being the bass fisherman that I am, or bass fisherman that I was, I'm kind of a multi-species guy now, but being the bass fisherman I was, or just all around fisherman, I am definitely an advocate for the Palomar knot. Really easy knot to tie, and it is the strongest knot out there. Double your line through. Create your loop. Oh, jeez. As, as soon as I say it's easy, I'm having trouble. I'm trying to go fast. Make your loop. And then push everything down. Wham. Just like that. Got yourself a nice ow sticky sharp gamakatsu hook on there. Um gamakatsu. I'm oh, sorry, these aren't gamakatsu. Oh yes it is. This is gamakatsu, sorry. This is a 
size 6 round bend travel. Got my tag cut off there. And then I just got a split shot. Now the important thing is, when you think about where you're putting your split shot, a lot of guys, oh, I need to get the middle down there. I need, I mean, the middle needs to stay down there. What they don't realize is this hook is enough to keep your bait where it's got to keep itself balanced. So it's going to go, it's going to basically use the line to its advantage. So you got to use the minnow to your advantage. So I like going about two feet up here, two feet up, or you can just take the length of basically a beaver dam tip up, which is 24 inches. And I'm just going to set this one at about 28 inches. And you're going to take your snap, or sorry, not your snap, uh, your weight. Open it up. I'm just going to close this one with my hands. So I don't have my swivel, or not swivel crimp, sorry. I don't have my weight crimp ready. So I'll shut that one up. Now what this single weight does is it basically allows your bait to have the most amount of action. As you can see, I can take this hook and I can swing this thing a long way around without having to move the weight at all. And that basically just gives it, that minnow a better roam radius and lets them swim above the grass or, you know, just swim around, you know. And if you're fishing basically holes in the grass like you would in the summer, you're going to want to move the weight down so he doesn't have that much room where he can get snagged up in the mill foil or whatever. You know, and then you're just going to set your tip up, take a marker, Put it where you want a lot of times a lot of times if you're fishing for largemouth you aren't even going to get to the end of the floor carbon the braid is just basically your main line and i like it for pike as well but hope you guys enjoyed this and hope this is going to be help you guys be a little more successful setting up your beaver dam tip-ups hope you enjoyed this episode of wisconsin angling outdoors i will see you guys later